to celebrate and continue to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with the one and only chef Patty Hinich. Yes, her Emmy-nominated PBS show, Patty's Mexican Table, back for season 12. Okay, okay. season 12, part travel, part cooking, and highlights Mexico's diversity and delicious cuisine. Take a look. If you're coming with me on an adventure, yes, this is amazing. You're gonna have to get your hands dirty. Okay. Oh, this is so much fun. And this time, I'm not even letting my husband off the hook. So all I need to do is come help you a little, and I get this as my reward. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> wow. Patty, as you might imagine, is also a cookbook author. Her most recent book, Treasures of the Mexican Table, is a New York Times bestseller. Yes. To the shock of no one. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she joins us this morning. There she is. Hello, Patty Hello. Enich. Hello. So nice to be here. It's Good so bright and beautiful in here. Oh Thank goodness. you. I love when my friends meet each other. I was going to say, here, you two go way back. We go way we back. Do. We go way back. Uh, but she was listening in on our bagel. Yes. And you had an, uh, you were wondering what this... What was in the bagel? Yeah. yeah. So you said... A chorizo. That makes it a torta, like instantaneously. Now, what is a torta? What is so a torta? The torta is Mexico's big, crusty, crunchy sandwich. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we typically have a telera or a bolillo, which is like Mexico's adaptation of the baguette, mm. which is just, and you can use any crunchy, right. crusty Very bread. Crunchy, yes. And then you just layer it like crazy, like that. Right. Like so this that, is that looks like a fusion a of a bagel and a torta right. to me. It was delicious. Is that right? looks delicious. Yes. You, can add, you can add a little bit of the guacamole and pico de gallo. Oh, she came brought. and she brought, she brought some guacamole. I love when people bring snacks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Burning question about yes. guacamole. Oh, yeah. And yeah. maybe you wonder about this. How do you prevent this? it from turning brown? No, I know that. Oh, I don't. <laughs> come on. You're, you're like, come on. For your guacamole, yes. do you mash it with a fork? Do you put it in a blender? Do you use an immersion blender? How do you get the guacamole, this consistency that you yeah. want? Because this is a fight okay. in the Castro household. Yes, but I have to say that is one of the most beautiful things about Mexican cooking. Salsas, guacamole, you can customize. You can adapt to whatever you want. If you want it super smooth, mm -hmm. uh -huh. blender with a couple of ice cubes makes it foamy, moussey, like incredibly delicious. You want it Ice mashed cubes. and rustic, go at yeah. it with a molcajete. I like molcajete. my chunky, right. so yeah. you can, because I like the soft, I, I like the combination yeah. of a little bit creamy, and I like to bite into the yeah. chunks of avocado. So what I do is I cut the avocado. Right. You have to use ripe, you know, avocados. Right, right. That's the most important thing. I've never avocados seen, I've never seen him are the so best. focused, Patty. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm, so he's, he's ripe so avocados. Right, because I'm very into the avocados right now because my daughter is very into avocados. But I don't know. First off, I just learned how to open it. Okay. And then take the thing out. Baby yeah. steps. Right, baby steps. But it I has to be ripe. Okay. Crucial. Right, yeah. so and soft. you know when the skin is very dark, mm -hmm. black, pebbly, and it gives in a little to your hold, open it. Good. Should be soft. Take out the pit. Then what I like to do is go with a soup spoon mm -hmm. and take out all of the meat, mm -hmm. go really close to the skin, and then you can cut it with a knife mm -hmm. in the shell. Yeah. And then when you put it into the bowl or the molcajete, half your work is done. Right. And you can mash with a fork or, or oh you God, know, yeah. the tejolote. Mortar which is and the pesto I know what it is. is molcajete. I understood what it is. I just, I'm I understood. Here. I have one. So many and choices. I have you one. You know, it can They're be not cheap. chunky. Those are not cheap, the molcajetes. <laughs> They are very cheap <laughs> if you log it from Mexico. I do not want to go to Mexico. Oh, I got to know my suitcase it will be is, over. So you heavy. Know, I, my my father-in-law brought yeah. mine from Mexico. from Mexico when I just got married and we oh moved my to the U.S. more than 20 years ago. I couldn't find that true Mexican oh molcajete, you know, volcanic rock, yes. heavy, yeah. and it's porous and it saves, it stores the memory of yeah. the cook yeah. because whatever you mash in there, the fragrance, the flavors yeah, sure. store in the wall. Yeah. So my molcajete, when I make my guacamole, will taste different from yours, depending sure. on what I use. Anyway, my, my father-in-law brought it. He had All the he way carried from, it. That's it's amazing. like, I don't know, 10, wow. 20 pounds. Wow. It's the molcajete that I have at home. It's a little pig. It has the face of a pig. With red eyes, so we call it the devil okay, pig. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you have to make. You have to name yours. I can see. Yeah. All these, all these seasons, this I, woman. I had no idea that well, there was so much that went into it. Okay, yeah. and and if congratulations, I have by the, the time, way. Thank you so much. It's been a, quite an amazing journey. We have an incredible community of viewers. We have like two million people that tune it's in amazing. to each episode. Wow. And you know the the show has really changed from 
going to Mexico to the places that I knew and loved, mm -hmm. Mexico City, my hometown, to really traveling to places that I've never been before or that I'm going back to and rediscovering and, and exploring. Yeah. So yeah. the audience comes with me to learn and explore. It's fascinating. I it. yeah. And I could do a hundred seasons more. So oh my gosh. what was going on? Your husband has never been part yeah. of it? Okay, I've, we've taped uh, more than 140 episodes in our home Congrats. kitchen. It, so it's not a set, it's our yeah. home, which is a little inconvenient. And he's usually hiding? My husband is very, very, so I'm social. Okay, And Never I talk a lot, as you can tell. Never would have guessed. Never would have guessed. Yeah. My husband is very, very private okay. and more quiet. And so when, when people come and film, it's like, whoa. Right. And he usually hides. <laughs> Or travels, or will stay mm -hmm. in his office. And he loves what I do, but he had never, he's camera shy, very camera shy. Mm -hmm. I get so many questions about, does Patty Hinnich has a, have a husband? Right. Is she still married? You, you know? need to set the record straight. Right. Yeah, we're People there, we're strong. Aww, we're strong, we're strong, we're um, strong. But anyway, so finally, because we've gotten so many questions and people ask him, like, why won't you be on that this season? He said, Patty, will you have me on? Am I well, he, I, asked. He, asked. he asked. He asked. Oh, and okay. so yes. he joined in an episode. We made a salpicón, which is like Mexico's kind of Thai beef salad or mm -hmm. tuna niswas. Mm -hmm. It's like a, like a pro, it's a beef skirt mm -hmm. steak, um, oh, yeah, so a lot delicious. of vegetables, of vinaigrette. And, and it was, he was so cute. Ah. He was so cute. <laughs> it was so endearing. And, um, that's and my amazing. boys were so proud too, because yeah. my boys have been, you know, they have no choice but to be a part of right. it, because sure. we're filming at home, In your home since they were very little. Yeah, and so they're used the, to it. They're growing up around it. Yeah, but they couldn't believe their father was there. Yeah. For those of you who are not familiar with your background um, and your love of cooking, where did where did it come from? I I have to say. I, I come from a family who's obsessed with food, but I come from a culture that's obsessed mm -hmm. with food. In Mexico, there's nothing that happens without food being the center of it. It's your birthday, it's, mm -hmm. you know, these tacos. It's Sunday, it's well rancheros. It's Christmas, it's, it's tamales. It's Wednesday, it's, your favorite show is on. You're well, sad, yeah. it's pozole. It's Pos a wedding, it's red pozole. You know, okay. you have a cold, it's caldo tlalpeño. Like, there's food for everything. You're getting all this? I'm get, running You're getting all down, all taking notes. Uh, yeah. There's there's a food for there's a solu a food solution yeah. for everything, for everything right. in life and so I grew up with it and um, but I wanted to be an academic I wanted to be a political analyst which is what I trained as and when I moved to the U S I was working in a think tank I did a master's in Latin American studies mm -hmm. I was writing all these policy research papers and I was just Not interested happy. in food yeah. and I would talk to people mm -hmm. from all different Latin American countries about how do you make this? How right. do you make mm. that? And why do you use that chili? And why do you, you know? Mm. And, and finally, I came to my boss and I said, you know, they had asked me to write a paper on ceviches in Latin, on democracies in Latin America. <laughs> <laughs> and, ceviches. And, and I, sta I started writing <laughs> one ceviche. on ceviches. Right. And I said, I'm of no use to you here. And I enrolled in cooking school and I've never looked back. That's amazing. What a story. I'll tell you what, though, had you written, written about that paper about democracies and ceviches, we'd have fewer, fewer conflicts, <laughs> I think. We'd have fewer you conflicts. Know, food is the common ground. Yeah. I mean, food bring, lets us it. connect. It connects us in our humanity mm -hmm. or Unites. needs to nurture sure. or what we all share. Right. And it is such a soft power. It's well, such yeah. a beautiful thing. There's not you can be talking to people that have very different political perspectives yeah. or you, you know, food. beliefs or whatever it may be, but when you put your food that you love on the table, it yeah. it just makes people open. It unites, it sparks conversation so. about not only the cultures, but the dishes and the heritage and backgrounds. And uh, here's the thing, I always wonder about what you think about authentic mm -hmm. Mexican food versus like other restaurants that try to be authentic. Right. Yeah, I love that question so much because I feel like the word authentic can be, can have such heavy, meaning in a positive or a negative mm -hmm. way. What's authentic to you may not be authentic to me. Yeah. What's authentic to someone from Oaxaca or Mexico City may be very not authentic to someone who grew up in, in California. Mm -hmm. I remember when Kim Severson, who I love from the New York Times, uh, once wrote an article about me and the show mm -hmm. and the food and, and Taco Bell. And um, 
and the experience of me as a Mexican from Mexico City coming in and eating this very, very yeah. fast food. And people were saying, Patty, that's uh, Mexican Americans, you know, that's what my mom used to give me when right. she came back at whatever time from her three jobs. And right. that's, that's what authentic I ate. to me. Yeah. So right. I feel like we can't generalize, answer, you yeah. know. Now, I do believe, <laughs> I do believe that there's Mexican regional cuisines that completely cross borders. Oh, it used man. to be said that you could only find authentic, authentic authentic Mexican food south of the border. And now? There's so many Mexican Everywhere. communities and right. cooks that come with their techniques, with yes. their recipes, with yes, their yes, knowledge, yes. and they make incredible food, and then they start using ingredients from where they start growing this can only, you get a new region. This, can, you. this can only beautiful. mean one thing. We're gonna watch an episode of the show where the husband comes and yeah. then Patty's gonna take us to Mexico. Okay. Yes. And we're gonna do the whole thing. And this is when we go to Yucatan, which is incredibly mm. wonderful. We've lost Dan. He's eating your food. Oh, Patty, good. Oh, good. Siempre oh, un placer. Good. Te quiero ah, mucho. Felicidades. 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 Thank you. Love you. So much. Thank you. So much oh, great thank stuff. Thank you. I'm Get eating your book. bagel, by the way. Take the thank torta. You. Yeah. That's <laughs> my book, by the way. You can't take okay, it. Yeah. You can watch season 12 of Patty's Mexican Table on PBS. How's right. the guac?